you even brought Arjun in my life more to life. Mm -hmm. So tell me a bit about why yeah. Arjun was so synonymous with you. The circumstance that he was in, um, for people that don't know, um, uh, Arjun is in uh, a, a battle. His, his family has tripped out. He's, a, he's a, a wonderful archer. He's the best archer in the world. And his family trips out and take the kingdom. And they're like, you know, they snatch his wife and they're trying to disrobe his wife. And he's looking like, yo, what are y'all jokers doing? <laughs> like, and he comes home and he's like, and they seize the kingdom and he can't believe that they have done this. And he, you know, he's a warrior and, you know, he could get, he could get the kingdom back, you know, but these are his uncles and his, his brothers-in-laws and his teachers and people that he loved and trusted and they took his kingdom. And they prepared an army and they're gonna fight Arjuna and he's, he's devastated that his family and his friends and all of that for material gain would, would do this to him. And he's deeply pious. And they prepare an army, the greatest army that's ever been assembled, except that they don't know that God is driving Arjuna's chariot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? And they think they're going to tear through Arjuna. They're going to do all of this, but God is driving Arjuna's chariot, right? And even in that, you know, Arjun, he's, he's, he's like, how can me killing all of my family be the right answer, right? And on the, on the other side of that, he's like, well, I'll just let them kill me. I'm not doing that. There's no version of me going into battle with them. I don't care how wrong they are. I don't care. And, it's, and as I just got deeper and deeper into that story, it's like, I feel like that all the time. Right? I feel like I'm in uh, what Radhanath Swami referred to as a perplexing situation. And I just really related to um, how the Gita handles those kinds of perplexing situations and recognizing that's what life is. You are born into a perpetual perplexing situation. And that the, the, it, was, it was the first time that I'd ever heard the spiritual idea like that, that life is a perplexing situation and you're never gonna get around being stuck in the duality. You have to elevate above the, the whole thing. You know, and the, the, the Christian concept about that, that I, I always heard and never understood fully. And my grandmother would say all the time, you gotta let go and let God, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And, it was, and it was like that, it just, you know, the, the, the Gita filled in that concept of what it really means. It doesn't mean don't do anything. Yeah. Let go and let God doesn't mean don't do anything. Yeah. It means do your divine duty, mm -hmm. whatever that may be. And just for whatever reason, the study of the Gita at this particular point in my, my life really clarified a lot of ideas of how to move through a, a world where you almost can't do it right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And yeah. it's like, there's a, there's, God's playing a practical joke, <laughs> right? And when you start seeing, you know, that there's a trick in there, you know, and the, the, the Gita illuminated that trick for me 
in a way. I was like, how could I be the biggest movie star in the world, be the best at all of this, and you, how you not love me? <laughs> <laughs> right? And, you know, how was my family miserable? And it's like, that's the truth.